Hi everyone, uh, it's our pleasure today to have uh, Jim Hager, who is a principal research scientist here at Science. Um, and we're going to talk about QTRAP technology, one of you know, my favorite platforms. So Jim, maybe kind of just as a brief intro, you can kind of give us an idea of where the idea of uh, QTRAP came from. My pleasure, Gary. Um, back in the in the early days of SciX, back in the 1990s, I was working on a bunch of different kinds of mass analyzers, mm -hmm. different from standard quadrupoles. And one that I was working on was called an RF-only mass spectrometer, which basically you can use a, re a regular quadrupole for that. There's no resolving DC, and you just have an energy barrier at the end of the quad. Ions are transmitted, transmitted through all the time, and when the ions become unstable in the fringing fields, they get an, an axial kick from, from the from the uh, fringing fields and they get over the barrier and you get a spectrum just like you would with a normal quadrupole. But we also found that you could use those, use the same ideas in a trapping sort of mode. So essentially the ions get in and then you use the fringing fields to get them out. And eventually we found out that you could use these devices at low pressure, which was great because Perfect. at the time we made triple quadrupoles. <laughs> yeah. So we could take these devices and put them in the Q3 position and the same quadrupole could act as the ion trap or as an RFDC mass filter. So we put it in the Q3 position and uh, did a lot of engineering uh, and in 2002 at the annual ASMS conference we introduced the, the QTRAP product uh, which was the world's first linear ion trap commercial instrument. And the beauty about the QTRAP is because it is on the, the ion path of a triple quadrupole it's it's more than just a hybrid instrument. It's it's two instruments in one because you have the full functionality triple quad, and then you have a hybrid linear ion trap instrument as well, where you can do a bunch of ion processing in front of the linear ion trap. So it it, it was a great new addition to the market. Absolutely, and I you know I have <laughs> full experience with that back in the 2002 time frame where I got to play with it obviously before we launched it. So it totally did open up multiple application avenues and workflow adjustments, if you will, right? For example, um, it really changed the way we did metabolite ID, yeah. right? There were so many different ways that you could collect metabolite information. The fact that it was built on, you know, a hybrid platform, you could do, you know, the, the standard triple quad uh, work, but then collect full scan MSMS information. So for MetID, it was perfect. And I think the other highlight for me, you know, from a bioanalysis perspective is that it gave you that added selectivity capability of something like MRM cubed or right. you know MS MS right. MS right and for me that like kind of changed the way we did bioanalysis yeah. which was which was huge so um, you know we're in 2015 and you know going towards uh, uh, 2016 uh, down near the summer here but what do you think of the future uh, for QTRAP technology? Basically we're working on two separate areas here to try to make them better one is to be able to put more ions in the trap like uh, slowly over the years, we've gotten better and better in the number of uh, in that what we call the ion trap capacity. Right. Uh, I think recently in, in research we've made some really big strides in that area that will eventually hit the market. And then the other area is the speed. So trying to cut out some of the extraneous little steps in sure. what we call the scan function. Right. Uh, before the ions hit the detector. So those are the big areas we're working on right now. And I think those will be huge when we think about the, the application areas that we use QTRAP technology for, so that'll only be uh, a benefit for those. So Jim, uh, thank you for your time and uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Gary.